What's up, people of the space? Welcome back to our lounge. You may not be everyone's cup of tea, but you're somebody's double shot of whiskey. Today on our lounge, it's five o'clock somewhere. First up, is imitation really a form of flattery? Am I the a-hole for walking out of the airport when I saw my husband's mom standing there with her luggage? I, female 30, don't have the best relationship with my husband's mom. Since day one, she tried to make remarks and compare her me to her. She then tried to get on my good side and started overly praising everything I do and sometimes even copying me like that one time when she literally dyed her hair purple just like mine and when everyone pointed out how ridiculous she looked, she actually blamed me and accused me of trying to make a joke out of her. So anyways, my husband and I took two weeks off of work to go visit some places out of the country. Tourism, in other words. The thing is, I was the one who saved up for and arranged for the trip. My husband was responsible for booking the tickets. My husband's mom wanted to come along and threw temper tantrums when I said no. She called, texted, sent people to talk to me into letting her come, even threatened to call the police and make some complaint up and get us to stay if she can't come. My husband said we should just take her, but I told him he was wrong to tell her about the trip in the first place. He gave me an ultimatum, said he wouldn't go if she can't come, and I told him I'd gladly call his bluff, which made him take his words back and say, fine, I will tell her to stop it because we won't take her. Things got quieter, suspiciously quieter. The day of the trip came and we got to the airport at 2 p.m. My husband was walking ahead of me and was looking left and right like he was looking for someone. I asked him, but he didn't respond. He led me to the waiting area and first thing I saw was his mom standing there with her luggage. I froze in my spot. I felt a cold wave washing over me and I was fuming inside. She and my husband were hugging and that's when I quietly turned around and started walking towards the exit. My husband followed me while shouting at me to stop. He tried to stop me, but I told him off the harshest way possible. He tried to say I was overreacting and that his mom was there anyway and I should let it go and not mess the trip up for us. I told him he and his mom could still go and that I was going home. I went home and sobbed into my dog's fur for several minutes. Turned out he booked her a ticket without me knowing. An hour later, he came home yelling and raging about how pathetic and spiteful I was to walk out and go home and ruin the trip last minute. I told him he caused this to happen. He said that I was being so hard on his mom, it's ridiculous. I refused to fight anymore, but he kept on berating me, then called my family to tell him that the trip was canceled and that it was because of me. My family said that I shouldn't have ruined it for myself and should have sucked it up and done my best to enjoy. Did I really overreact? You know how it is on our lounge. Ask an opinion and you're gonna get one. Peanut Butter Toast chimes in first. I don't wanna call the divorce card, but divorce. You told your boundaries, you said no. She crossed it. Your husband told you he would tell her no. He lied. He tried to pin you in a corner by not saying anything and bringing her anyways and got upset. You refused to be a part of his little trap and then to berate you? He's not a good man, he needs to go. Not the a-hole. Our next opinion comes from Materials Cellist. This right here, I would divorce his butt. He lacks a backbone and the ability to stand by your side. Time to cut your losses and move on. We have another opinion from Runs with Turnbuckles. Jumping in to add that nowhere in OP's post does she state, My husband is wonderful, caring, helpful person, and we love each other so much. This is so unlike him. Very telling. Second rat weighs in, not the a-hole. Hubby lied to you and put his mother before you? I'd be looking to get out of that marriage. That would be a deal breaker for me. The OP replies, Thing is, he didn't even pay for anything, and I really wanted us to have some special time together as a couple and was really looking forward to having this trip, so much that I worked more hours to be able to save for it. Snake Snoobies chimes in, You're not the a-hole, but your family is right. You should have went. You paid for everything. Your name is on everything. You could have easily went and enjoyed your two-week vacation yourself while not letting them into your hotel rooms and not use your accommodations. Ruby Larkspur 87 says, Not the a-hole. He gave you an ultimatum. No loving partner would ever put you in that position. He's a mummy's boy and she's manipulative and toxic. You have every right to enjoy a holiday with your husband without them behaving like children. You did the right thing. The next right thing to do is leave. He doesn't respect you. The OP responds, I didn't know he'd really take it this far and actually give an ultimatum. That shook me and I'm not gonna lie, from the moment he gave this ultimatum, 
I really wanted to cancel. May I read Bynes ads? Cancel your marriage? It's a sham. He is already with another woman. His mother is his number one girl. Update. Hello. I don't know where to begin. It's been an absolute nightmare recently, and I feel like I was losing my sanity. So for more details about my situation, I have to admit that my husband's mom favors him over all his siblings. This affected his relationship with them and me as well. He's never seen an issue on how differently his mom treats him. It bothered me and made me feel uncomfortable. The whole dynamic made me feel uncomfortable. Going low contact has never even been an option, like he has to see her or call her every day. Most of his siblings don't talk to him, and I 100% believe it's because of his mom's favoritism, like I said. He does bear some blame for not seeing how wrong this is till this day. In many instances, I found myself making excuses for his behavior, even in my post. I did it spontaneously, and I don't know why, but I guess it's because of how much I love him and because I really, really wanted to be able to work things or this type of thing out without letting it affect our marriage. Regarding what happened with the trip, he tried to have a talk with me and most of what he said came from a place of blame. Blame towards me. I just couldn't continue with this argument. I told him I needed space and that I would be going to stay with my sister for a while. He didn't take it well. He literally got up from the couch and opened the door telling me to go right then. In that moment and seeing how he was still not even anywhere near understanding what he has done just made things perfectly clear to me. I had just had pictured years and years of my life being lived like that and I was like, no, I can't do it. Can't take any more of it, especially when he keeps focusing on being right every time. His mom can do no wrong. I'm always the aggressive, crazy, jealous, pathetic, overreactor. All these people's opinions, advice, and concerns were like a spark, like the wake-up call I really needed. Though I wish that it didn't get this far, but what's done is done. Right now I'm staying with my sister. I brought my dog with me as well. He sent me his last message telling I'm the one choosing to end what we had together, but I believe it's the other way around, especially with how he keeps making his mom the victim in this situation. It's become clear now that we keep going in circles with no end in reach, and I'm just so exhausted and overwhelmed. I'm not mad at him and don't expect him to change, but at least I'm given options to decide what's best for me and my future, even if it's separation and divorce. A big thank you to those who reached out with resources that I feel very, very lucky to have come across. Just wanted to give you an update since many of you asked for it. Our first reaction to this comes from Cadmium2093. I'm sorry you're going through this, but I'm also so very, very, very proud of you. You are standing up for yourself, putting yourself first, looking into the future and making sure it will be what you want it to be. I wish you the best of luck. Give the doggo the biggest of hugs and lots of pets. You could not be for real too, has another thought. He sent me his last message telling I'm the one choosing to end what we had together. Maybe if he says this enough times to himself, he'll actually start to believe it. I actually think he knows this is all on him, but he's too weak to do anything about it and is desperate to deflect the blame. I'm pretty sure I'd just tell him to let me know where he and his mommy are registered as I'd love to send them a wedding gift. One more thought from Say Say What 91. I remember your original post. I'm sorry your husband is such a dingbat, but I do think you're doing the right thing. If he doesn't cut the umbilical cord, it's a dead relationship. I'm glad you have your sister and doggo for support. I think your ex has a lot to figure out in regard to his relationship with his mother, OP. He shouldn't have put his mother before you, especially on a trip that was supposed to be the two of you, that had such promise to be so incredibly romantic and intimate. Obviously, his priorities are elsewhere. And honestly, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree when hearing the way his mother behaves. She's absolutely childish and emotionally immature. I feel like if you would have stayed with him or chose to stay with him, the situation could only get worse. Parents can have trouble letting their child mature into adulthood. It often happens when parents are insecure about how to live without a child being dependent on them. They're anxious about being on their own. When it comes to seeking advice or confiding in one's parents before their spouse, it could be the other side of the same coin. Usually, that's when people don't individuate from their parents, and it means they are stuck in that childlike role. Let's face it, you don't want to raise a man-child. What would you have done when you saw your mother-in-law standing there at the airport? Was her reaction warranted? Next, put these people on the no-fly list. Am I the a-hole for not giving up my second free seat next to me in the plane? I am obese. Like I am comfortable having two seats in the plane type of obese. I am well aware of that, and I really don't like to bother people with my weight. A week ago, I was doing a conference by plane, and because I was going alone, usually when I fly with my boyfriend, I don't buy two since he sits next to me. I bought two seats. I fit in one, 
but my side is usually touching the person next to me and I feel uncomfortable for them. It happened to me that they gave me nasty looks and I felt extremely uncomfortable the whole flight. So I sat down on the plane and put the armrest up so I would be really comfortable. Some couple came and they both sat next to me because they got separate seats and they noticed the seat next to me was empty. Exactly what I was afraid of happening. My side kept touching the guy next to me and he even pushed me a bit when he moved in the seat. I was feeling extremely uncomfortable and asked him if he could go to his seat because I bought this one for my comfort. He told me no, since the seat is empty and he wants to be with his girlfriend. Well, I told him I understand, but I feel uncomfortable and I paid for the second seat so exactly this doesn't happen. He refused again and started to chat with his girlfriend. I called the flight attendant and quietly told her what is happening. She asked the guy to leave my second seat and he and his girlfriend gave me a nasty look. The girlfriend mumbled something like, effing fat witch, under her breath but nothing directly to me. So am I the a-hole for insisting on him to leave? You know the community's got some responses to this one. Molasses Fragrant 342 starts us off. Not the a-hole, former flight attendant. It's your seat, you paid for it. If that classless couple wanted to sit together that badly, they should have paid for seats together. The OP responds, I must point out the flight attendant was absolute sweetheart, very kind and understanding. She was also giving me the belt extension, and when I apologized to her, she told me not to worry about it, and it was overall a very pleasant situation to talk to her. Knox Wild chimes in, Not the a-hole. If it happens again, don't let them sit down. Block the extra seat and state immediately, I paid for two seats. This one is not available. Alternative Fox 4627 adds in, Not the a-hole. It doesn't matter why you purchased that seat. You could have bought it for the spirits of your ancestors so they could guide you safely to your destination, and it would have been no one's business but yours. Sorry this happened. You are absolutely not the a-hole for fighting for what is rightfully yours, OP. You bought two seats, and you should be able to have two seats. Life happens, and unfortunately, those two couldn't sit beside each other, and she took out her frustration with the airline on you unfairly. She should never have said that, and I'm sorry for her unkind words. Remember that you're never going to see these people again, and they don't even matter in the grand scheme of things. Keep doing you and shine on. Have you ever had to deal with ignorance like this before? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Lastly, big egos have little ears. Am I the a-hole for telling a guy what I do for work and letting him pay for my drinks during the whole evening? Edit title. Am I the a-hole for not telling a guy what I do for work and letting him pay for my drinks during the whole evening? My friend Grace invited me to a board game bar to play and have drinks with her, her boyfriend, and one of their friends, Nick. We went to get drinks in pairs, Grace going with her boyfriend, meanwhile, Nick and I stayed at the table, and vice versa. So Nick and I had plenty of time to talk, just the two of us. Nick started the night by telling about his recent career change. He decided to quit his previous job, go to a coding boot camp, and he got a job as a developer one or two months ago. He was very proud of himself and his new salary and told me this multiple times. He never asked me what I do for work, but talked about his new job quite a lot, occasionally saying, sorry, you don't understand that. <laughs> During the entire evening, I never told him I had been working as a software engineer for the past four years because he never asked and honestly i found it a bit entertaining when it came to the drinks he invited me to every single one don't worry about it it's not a problem with my developer salary i told him multiple times he doesn't have to pay for me but he insisted at the end of the night when we were saying goodbyes he took out his phone to send me a friend request on facebook my job is listed in my profile so that was when he realized that i'm a software engineer he asked me if it's true that I'm a software engineer, and I answered yes. He asked me why I haven't told him. Why did I let him believe I was a cashier like Grace used to be? I never implied that. And why did I let him pay for everything when I probably earned more than him? I told him that he never once asked, and it was his fault he assumed. He could have simply asked me about my job, but he only wanted to brag about his. But if he wants me to, I can pay him back for the drinks. He was angry and said I made a fool out of him. I think he did that, not me. But now Grace and her boyfriend are on his side too, saying that it would have cost me nothing to tell him early in the evening, and I only kept it for myself for my own entertainment. Well, I did find it entertaining, but I don't really feel like I did anything wrong. Am I the a-hole? Let's check in with the community for some judgment. Laffy4444 starts us off. He never asked me what I do for work, but talked about his new job quite a lot, occasionally saying, sorry, you don't understand that, haha. This right here, not the a-hole. Our next thought from Astra Trillion. Poor OP was in a no-win situation. Shut up and listen to him brag, or say she's a software engineer with four years of experience, and be accused of either emasculating him, downplaying his accomplishments, or having sex with the bosses to get her position. 
Little Conflict 6489 says, This 100%. Let's see where this could have gone instead of where it went. Dude was going to be a jerk either way. Why do women have to be in charge of protecting men's feelings? It's complete BS. Our next comment is from Federal. Not the a-hole. He wanted to brag and he was a bit sexist. He deserved this lesson. Another thought from Taxi Jab. Not only are you not the a-hole, you're an absolute freaking legend. Edit. Holy crap balls, guys. Thanks for the awards. One more thought from Aggressive Fudge 5759. Nick was bragging. You played along with it. It probably never occurred to him that women can be software engineers. It was probably quite entertaining, although you probably wouldn't want him as a boyfriend. Not the a-hole. You are not the a-hole, OP. The guy was bragging and let his ego get in the way. He thought he was a big hotshot talking about himself, thinking he was better than you. Obviously, when he found out what you do, OP, he felt really stupid and embarrassed. Maybe if he had remained poised and humble, he wouldn't have put himself into that situation. Really, it shouldn't matter what job you have or where you come from, but he clearly puts values on those types of superficial things. You repeatedly told him that he didn't have to pay, and yet he insisted because he wanted to feel powerful. He dug his own grave. What are your thoughts? Would you have spoken up more or let him find out for himself? And as always, thank you for joining us today on Our Lounge. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. We would hate for you to miss out on our next video. If you have any feedback on today's content, please let us know in the comments below. We can't wait to hear from you. We can't wait to